In this lab, I'll show you how to exploit the TECL vulnerability and get access to the admin page and delete the user Carlos using request smuggling. I'll also show you an easy method you can use to calculate the chunk size of our smuggled request and how you can calculate the content length we set in that smuggled request. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of our application here and we're targeting the root endpoint, so this page right here. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want to get slash request for the root here and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And the first thing we wanna do is prepare our attack request. So I'm gonna rename this tab to attack request. I'll just give it that name. The next thing we wanna do is downgrade the HTTP protocol here on the right side under request attributes to HTTP 1.1. And then I'm also going to change the request method to post because we'll have data in our request body. And I'm also gonna remove the unnecessary header. So anything up from content type and underneath the host header. There we go. Now, because this is a TECL lab, we also wanna make sure that we can uh, control the content length ourselves. So let's go here to settings for the request and make sure that update content length automatically is turned off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show uh, the non-printable characters. You don't have to do this. I find it handy just to see the carriage return line feeds. Uh, it's easy when you want to count uh, content length in bytes or uh, it's easy to have an extra one or a missing one. So I suggest turning that on. Next thing we wanna do is I'm going to send a copy of this request to repeater and that will become our normal request. So I'm gonna rename this tab to normal request. And I'm gonna add some data here in the body. So foo request body parameter foo for a value of bar and send it just to make sure that we get back a 200 okay. And we do, so I'm gonna to go to our attack request and then I'm going to add a transfer encoding chunk header here. and then add a card return line feed to separate our request headers from our request body. And we're going to start with a differential response. So I'm going to request, uh, send a get request for something that doesn't exist using HTTP 1.1 followed by a carriage return line feed. And then we want to think of this request from the point of view of the front end server, which is using transfer encoding chunked. And we want to make sure that the front end server forwards our entire request body to the backend server. So for terminating our request here, our smuggled request, we want to make sure that we have a terminating chunk at the end. So I'm gonna add a zero followed by a carriage return line feed and another carriage return line feed because this is our terminating chunk. I've also separated because within our um, smuggled request, this is our body, this is our header. We wanna make sure there's a carriage return line feed in between to separate them as well. And then we have to think about the chunk size that we have for this get request here. So if I dock this inspector window to the left and I have this entire line here selected, you can see that the chunk size here is 1D. This is because we want to make sure that you exclude the carriage return line feed that comes before the next chunk size. In this case, the next chunk size is, happens to be the terminating chunk with a size of zero. So you don't include this carriage return line feed but you include everything here. And if you select this, you can see that the chunk size is 1D hexadecimal. So I'm gonna add that above. And now we wanna think about the content length itself here for our request, because if we think about our smuggled request from the point of view of the backend server, we wanted to think that our request has ended after the chunk size here, so that it's poisoned um, by the get request here. And to do that, we want to make sure that we set the uh, content length here to four bytes because this is one, two, three, four bytes. But now if we were actually to send this attack request as we have it here, our attack actually won't work, this differential response. And that's because we haven't explicitly set a content length here. So if you think about it, the backend server will see this request first. It will think that the request has ended here and execute the post request. It will then see this get request, but because we haven't set a content length, implicitly the content length is set to zero, which means it will ignore whatever's in the body here. And it will actually just execute this get request behind the scenes, let's say. So our normal request won't be appended to our smuggled request here, and we won't be able to see that 404 response. And that's not what we want. So we want to make sure that we set a content length here for our smuggled get request that is at least equal to the size of our actual smuggled request body, which is five bytes plus one byte at least, so six bytes total, to make sure that at least one byte of our normal request here gets appended to our attack request, so that here when we send our 
when we follow up our attack request with our normal request, we're able to see a 404 here and we're able to see that response. So let's go under our get request here and define a content length of six bytes followed up by a new line because we do want to make sure there's this carriage return line feed between our smuggled request headers and our body. And the last thing we want to do is because we've added a content length six here, we've added bytes to our uh, chunk here. We want to update the chunk size. So again, I'm going to select. So we're not including the carriage return line feed that comes before the next chunk size of zero. So I'm going to select just these two lines, the content length and the get request. And we see that it's a hexadecimal value of 30. So I'm going to change this from 1D to 30 and then send this request. We get back at 200 OK and go to our normal request and send it. It's taken a while to get back, but we should see a 404 in the response. And there we go. We get back a 404 not found. So our attack is working. So let's go back to our attack request. And then instead of the get request for something that doesn't exist, let's change this and actually request the admin page instead. Now we have changed the size of our chunk. So let's select this, these two lines again, and we see that uh, the new chunk size is 28. So let's update that to 28. And then let's send this request. We get back at 200 OK, go to our normal request and send it as well. And now we get back 401 unauthorized. So if I go to render the page, you can see the error here, admin interface only available to local users. That's something we've seen in the previous lab. So we want the backend server to think, to trick it into thinking that this was a local request. So let's go back to the attack request. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a host header for a value of localhost. We again need to update the chunk size. So I'm gonna select everything we have here. And now the chunk size is 39 update that and then send our request. We get back at 200. Okay. So that's working. Let's go to our normal request and send it. And now we get our uh, admin page and we get the option to delete users. So let's go into pretty and look at the code, scroll to the bottom. And we have the admin user, uh, Carlos here, or we have the user Carlos here, and this is the link to delete the user. So let's copy that and go to our attack request and then just replace what we had here with that delete action. And then again, I'm going to select the three lines here because we need to update the chunk size to 50 this time. So I'm gonna update that. And then I'm gonna send this request. And we get back a 200 okay. And go to our normal request and send it as well. And it's taken a while to get back again but we should see a 302 found to indicate that our uh, delete action was successful. So let's go to the lab. And if I refresh the page, we should see, yep, congratulations, you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.